Okay, let's talk about the last unit of 22, which is Bayes' theorem. And the Bayes' theorem is just kind of interesting because let's look at a problem. So, and what's going on with Bayes' theorem? So, the these kind of problems show up in like, as I said before, like epidemiology and the idea of like what order something happens. So let's say that we will, we're, we're in the middle of COVID right now. So let's assume that probably that you get the, the disease is 5%. And then you go and you think you have this. So the idea is uh, given you have the disease, um, the COVID test will tell you it's probably, you're, you're probably like nine. 95% of the time, so that there's a nine. If you have, given that you have the disease, there's a 95% chance that the test will be positive, which is what you kind of expect. Um, if you, um, given that you have, you do not have the disease, um, there is a 99% chance that you don't have um, that you that the test will come back negative, and so the information given leads you to think that D happened first, and we kind of, we'll make our, we'll make our, our uh, you know, our tree, so we know that there's a 5% chance you have the disease, 95% chance you don't have the disease, and, um, you know, uh, given, for this branch, it's given that you have this disease, there's a 95% chance, uh, if you are negative, if you're disease, there's a 5% chance um, that you're T negative, but we don't actually need that. We can do the other two branches here. This is positive if you're not, negative if you don't have, we know this is 99%. We know that this is 0.05, we know this is 0 0.01. The question though, you're going to be asked is, what is the probability, uh, given that you test positive, that you actually had the disease? That's kind of weird, you know, but the thing is this shows up with, once again with false positives. So, and it's just really interesting that mathematically we're bringing it together. We, we have implied that the disease happens first and the test happens later, but mathematically we want to know if you test it positive, does that automatically mean you have the disease? Once again, it's about false positives. So, so, we looked at this and we saw this, the way we described it in the last lesson is, this is our new 100%. So, what we're gonna do, we know that it's the probability of D and positive over the probability of positive. So what we're gonna be putting in the denominator are our positive branches. And we look that we have two positive branches. We have this first branch up here, and we have this, um, and we have this positive branch down here. So there's two, and we can think about, we can kind of start to think about what exactly, uh, you know, what it means to be, what it means to be positive. And if you think about it, the probability that something's positive is the probability that you have a disease and then you test it positive given that you have the disease or the probability you don't have the disease and you test it positive given that you don't have the disease. This is, these are all the options of testing positive. We don't have the test is that good. It's, it's a really good test, but it's not perfect. And this is, this is where this comes into play. So once again, the, the probability of being positive is that you have the disease and you test it positive or, and, or, or you didn't have the disease and you tested, but you still tested positive. Now, what goes up here? Well, we want to know. We want to know the, the one of the branches because once again, this denominator is now the sample space, and one of these is an object. But we're looking for that first one, 0 0.05 times 0.95, and uh, you know, like, sorry, let me write that out. And so. That's our first branch, the probability you have the disease times the probability you're positive given you have the disease. And so what do we have here? Let's see. So we have 0 0.05 times 0 0.95 over 
uh, 0.05, the first option, which we use for the dynamic plus, the, the false positive. This is a, this, in the second case, there's two, and once again, you can be positive, you have the disease, or there's a false positive, and the, and the probability here is, um, that's 0.95 times 0 0.01. Um, did I write that down in my notebook? Nope, let me get my calculator and turn it on. Sorry, 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 let's see. So we have 0 0.05 times 0.95 plus uh, 0.95 times 0 0.01, enter. So what do you have? This is uh, 0.057, what's going on up here? So let's see, 0 0.05 times 0.95, enter. And that's 0 0.0475. Let's divide that by 0 0.057. 83.3. So it's an 83.3. Is that? Yeah. Yes. There's an 83.3% chance that. Um, if you're positive, you have the disease. Good, let's move on. Let's move on. So then, once again, this is all about the branches. Um, and the idea, once again, the idea, what we see here, the idea is that it's just, it's just really interesting. We're given, like, B, the probability that of A and B, we want to find the probability that B given A. And it seems counterintuitive just one of that happens, but follow the branches. So one second, so first, you know, first make a tree diagram. And then um, and then this is the new one hundred percent. And these branches go in the denominator. And so let's try another one. So the idea is, let's here's another example from the, from the book. The, pro, the problem that you take a bus um, is 70%. And the probability you take a car is 30%. Now the book then says the probability that you're going to be late given that you took the bus is 5% and the probability that you're late given that you took a car is 12%. So your first thing is when you make, when you make the tree diagram is you know the first the implications of the first thing you did is that you, you took your uh, you know you either did your bus or your car and then the answer is you are either late or not late late or not late and that's fine so let's we can fill that in the bus is seventy percent the car is thirty um, you are late giving to the bus is five percent this would be ninety five um, let's see the problem you were late given you took the car is 12%, that means you're not 88. Now, that's fine, but that's not what Bayes wants to know. Bayes' theorem says, what, given that, given that you were late, given that you were late, what was the probability you took the bus? It's kind of, it's kind of a, turn, a twist. Well, we can still figure that out. This is my new 100%. So these are the outcomes of this denominator. Well, there's two ways I could be late. I could either have taken the bus, or I could have been late by the to the car, right? So the probability, let me do that in black, the probability that you're late, the probability you're late is equal to either I, I took the bus and I was late, or um, I took the car, and I was late. Now we're interested in the bus, the first option. So this is the probability of taking the bus and you were late. 
which is equal to 0.7 times 0 0.05. Let's figure, let's take our calculus. Did I do that? It ends up being, there's a 0.493. There's an almost 50% chance that you, that you, uh, that you took the bus if you were late. And once again, we're not, there's a really low possibility that you're, that you're late, but given, but given that you took the bus, there's a 50% chance you were late. No, sorry, given you were late, there's a 50% chance you took the bus. And let's try another one. Um, Uh, what is that? Sorry, I need to just look at the book quickly. Yes, raining an umbrella. And then the next example from the book is once again, it's another. They're all Bayes problems. Let's look at this one. The next one in the book. Um, there's a ten percent chance that it's raining, and if it's raining. If it's raining, then there is a 90% chance that I have my umbrella. And if it's not raining, there's a 20% chance that I have my umbrella. Right? Now, the implication is rain comes first, and then I get my umbrella. And so you make your chart, right? You know, rain, not rain. You know, Umbrella given rain, no umbrella given rain. Umbrella given not rain, no umbrella given not rain. And we can fill in the numbers. We know that the probability of rain is 10%, the probability of not rain is 90%. The probability of uh, umbrella given that's rain is 90%, that means the southern branch is 0.1, and the probability given that it's in rain, the umbrella is 20%. That means the probability you don't have an the probably you don't have an umbrella, given that it didn't rain, is eighty percent. Well, you know what's coming. You know the question Bayes is going to ask. Bayes wants to know, given you showed up in the morning, given you had an umbrella, what was the probability that it rains? Once again, if it rains, if it, if it rains, then I carry an umbrella. But Bayes wants to know, given that you had the umbrella, what was the probability that it was raining? So, this is already 100%. Let's look at our, so what's in our branches? Well, we have 0.1 times 0.9 plus 0.9 times 0.20. We're interested in the first branch, which is 0.1 times 0.9. We can do this, this, I mean, this technically could be a part one problem. We have 9 times 1, so it's 9 over 100 over, let's see, this is 9 over 100 plus what do I have here, um, 18 over 100, 9 over 27, there's a one-third chance. So given, given you had your umbrella, there's a 33% chance that it was raining. And uh, that's base. Once again, Get your needed information, create your tree. It's gonna be flipped around. This is your new 100%. These are the two or three branches, and then pick one of the options for the, the outcome or the event that you hope to happen. And that's the idea of Bayes' theorem.